Hey everyone, this is a supplemental video that's going to go over some Calman measurements I took of the Samsung A54's display. If you want to see the full review of the A54, I made a separate video you can watch. Starting with the brightness measurements, with the adaptive brightness feature turned off and brightness set to 100%, I measured 423 nits. With the adaptive brightness feature turned on, I shined the brightest flashlight I had on the sensor and measured 911 nits. I've seen other measurements where they've measured 1000 nits. Uh, this is just using a flashlight that I have handy. I'm sure if I shine a much brighter line on it or sunlight, I could hit a thousand nits. Looking at the screen mode options, you have vivid and natural. Natural is the most accurate out of the two. Um, it's what I would use, uh, but I'll show you the measurements for each. Looking at the grayscale measurements for natural, you can see it has a neutral color temp, 6380K, uh, averaged out there of 1.1, and the average gamma is 2.1 overall. Uh, following the sRGB gamut. You can see that dip in brightness at 10%. Uh, you can also see it in content. There's a lack of some shadow details sometimes. Things are just a little too dim. But overall, the grayscale is pretty neutral. Red, blue, and green are pretty tight. And the natural screen mode has pretty much full gamut coverage for the standard RGB color space. Uh, and you can see the saturation sweeps for the standard RGB color space. Uh, the biggest errors were with chroma. You can see the oversaturation of like red and blue. Even in the natural screen mode, there's still some oversaturation on the A54. It still has lower average delta errors overall, but with lower chrome errors, the delta errors would be even lower. Uh, and you can see with the color checker again, biggest errors with, with chroma. Average delta error 1.45, pretty low overall, but if the display was less oversaturated, you'd have even lower errors. Now looking at the vivid screen mode, you can see a much cooler color temp, 7000K. Uh, you can see at 20%, it starts pushing blue more and more. Uh, the same dip at 10%. Again, you see reduced shadow details throughout. Uh, averaged out there at 2.9, much higher than the natural screen mode. So the vivid screen mode covers a wider color space, the P3 color space. And you can see the gamut coverage here at 99.9%, .9%, so pretty much full coverage. Unfortunately, with the vivid screen mode, you see more color errors. You can see here there's still oversaturation, but there's also some hue errors as well in certain colors. Average out there at 3.24 overall. Same with the color checker readings, you see much bigger errors than we saw with the natural screen mode. Average out there at 3.45 overall. High chroma errors, there's also hue errors and luminous errors here. So despite the fact that the vivid screen mode can cover a wider color space, there's just more inaccurate colors overall, as well as a more inaccurate grayscale. The nice thing about the vivid screen mode is it actually gives you some white balance controls you can use that can actually tighten up the grayscale a little bit. It doesn't help with the color inaccuracies, but you can make the white point more neutral. So the first controls you see are the white balance controls. Cool on the left, warm on the right. You can see moving the slider one notch to the right for warm will give you a more neutral color temp of 6,700. And you see the average out there drops to 1.9. Moving the slider two notches to the warm side, you get a much tighter grayscale. Uh, average color temp of now 6,400K. Uh, averaged out there 1.2. So this is a good way of cleaning up the white point if you're gonna be using the Vivid screen mode. Also in Vivid, in addition to the white balance slider, there's also advanced settings where you can make individual white balance adjustments for red, green, and blue. The setting that I've stuck with overall when using Vivid was to move the white balance slider one notch to the right on warm. And in the advanced settings, move the blue slider all the way to the left with the green slider seven notches from the right. And I ended up with an average color temp of 6,394K with an average delta of 1.1, which looked the most accurate to me. But if you want a quick adjustment, you can just use the white balance slider and move it all the way to the right to warm. And it'll give you a pretty neutral white balance. Uh, unfortunately, with these color settings in vivid mode, you can still see colors are inaccurate. Uh, there's not much you can do about that. But at least you can get the white point looking more neutral. Uh, you can see with the color checker and the saturation sweeps, Colors are still inaccurate, oversaturated. I can see, especially with reds, it's just this glowing, oversaturated look. So I basically just kept the screen mode in natural the whole time. You get the most accurate colors and a more neutral white balance. Even though you have a smaller standard RGB color space compared to Vivid, uh, I just prefer the more accurate colors overall. But like I said, even in natural, there is still some oversaturation and I can see it, especially in colors like red where it's just this glowing red uh, image. Uh, but those are pretty much all the measurements I took on the Samsung A54. 
If you have any questions, you can ask in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to check out the full review of the Samsung A54, I'll link to the video right here. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll catch you in the next video.